Welcome to the unpack. Do you guys have orders? If you do, congratulations. Oh my gosh, we're so excited for you. But now you're getting ready to get overwhelmed by all of the acronyms and the barrage of information that's coming your way. So we want to make sure that you have a moment to just exhale and have a, a, a group of friendly folks and friendly faces to commiserate um, and get through this experience with. So sometimes, I don't know about you guys, I feel like it's a fold the cheese moment. Any Shits Creeks fans out there? Yeah. Where it's like, just PCS, just PCS, just fold it in. So we're going to try to break that down for you. And so you understand what folding the cheese actually means. So if you guys are ready, we're going to get to it. Let's unpack it. everyone welcome to the unpack we are in season two this is our very first episode of season two so we are so excited that you are joining us back for another conversation or slate of conversations uh, that we like to call pcs prep therapy um, so we're going to unpack some overwhelming topics uh, each week we're going to bring you a different sort of zone of genius if you will we're going to encourage you to join us every single week and invite your friends and family who may also benefit from uh, understanding sort of a higher level of this military uh, relocation process, um, and again, be able to do it in community with other folks and the Millie family. Our whole goal is to make sure that you are PCSing with less stress, not more of it, and that you're making informed decisions. We want you to save time. We want you to connect more quickly, and we want you to embrace this so-called adventure. <laughs> right? Sometimes the adventure definitely gets lost in the sauce, if you know what I mean. All right. So today we're going to be spending um, some time just be at the very beginning. We want to like roll back uh, this whole concept, right? I think we get caught up, especially those of us have, who've been doing this for a minute, get caught up in the, okay, let's PCS, let's Diddy, let's, you know, let's talk about Sofa and let's make sure you get your malt and all these things. Okay, well, cool. But let's roll that back to the very beginning of what even is a PCS, right? Sometimes we forget there are folks that have never done this before. So we want to make sure that we're starting from the very beginning um, and making sure that you are clear from the get-go what all is entailed in this whole PCS process. So um, I'm going to introduce you to a ton of friends that you're going to be able to meet and help uh, explain this in a much more clear way than I think I can. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to bring them on in just a second. But right now, I want to give you a heads up on kind of how this whole entire show and series is going to work. So wherever you're watching this from, first things first, I want you to go ahead and find the comment section, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, let us know where you're watching from. Okay, I would actually love to know if you have a PCS coming up your Yourself. We want to involve you in the conversation. So if you have questions for us or for our guests that we can, you know, bring up on screen and answer together as a community, we are happy to do that for you. We want to hear what you're struggling with, what you did well, what experience and tips and expertise you have to show or to share. We would love to hear that too. And... I also would love to encourage you to share this. There's a share button wherever you're watching. Uh, go ahead and click that button and share it out to your friends who, again, people in your network who might benefit from this conversation as well. So whether you have a PCS coming up this year, um, whether you know about the PCS that may or may not be coming up this year, <laughs> or if you know folks that are, I guarantee you someone in your crowd, in your circle, uh, might be able to tune in and get a little benefit from what we're gonna be talking about. All right, and then the next thing I wanna tell you about is we never wanna show up empty-handed, right? So today we wanna offer you the opportunity for a freebie. Yay, freebies. Okay, and this one's easy. And actually, if you're watching this live, um, you're gonna have a little bit of an advantage because all you have to do is type in the comments the letters PCS for permanent change of station. And we're gonna deliver to your messenger inbox here on Facebook. Um, but if you're on YouTube, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a copy of our PCS basics 
toolkit. So this is an awesome little ebook that you can download and have handy on your device or on your computer. It's gonna have all of the acronyms we're gonna be talking about, a lot of these first steps kind of laid out. There's a couple of worksheets in there that are super helpful to help you get organized and sort of wrap your head around what your first steps need to be uh, the minute you get that <laughs> that uh, sweet honey we have to talk <laughs> um, notification of the fact that you have orders to move to a new duty station. So again, type anything about PCSing in the comments, whether you're PCSing to somewhere, whether you had the most amazing PCS last year or this summer, or <laughs> yeah, give us give us something uh, that we'll enjoy reading. Um, but as long as it has those letters in it, you'll get a copy of our toolkit. So you guys, I'm just so excited to be not only talking about this this entire topic, but more than anything, to be bringing on some of my friends. So if we're ready to get started, um, let's jump in to what even is a PCS. And to do that, I brought my friends, my colleagues, my Millie Scouts extraordinaire <laughs> to join us to have this conversation. All right, we're going to go around the horn. Um, we're, there'll be a quiz afterwards, you know, who's, whose name is who and, and who was at what duty station. Um, but right now I want to introduce you all to Megan. Nope. I got to point that way. Megan at Fort Campbell. We've got Nicole. Nope. I got to point. Look, I'm, I'll figure this out one someday down bottom, <laughs> bottom corner at Fort Hood. And no, I did that wrong. Megan, look at me y'all. See, I'm already messing it up. Megan, say hi. I'm just going to stop. Megan, why don't you <laughs> say hi? Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell it doesn't always flow smoothly around here <laughs> it is what it is uh megan look, we'll go around we'll start with you megan go ahead and introduce yourself um tell folks a little bit about your 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 journey as a military spouse so i am a military spouse of 10 years my husband just recently was medically retired from the army we are actually um on our, I guess you can say our final PCS. Um, we are in the Nashville area. I scout at Fort Campbell. Um, and we are actually living with my parents trying to find a house in this crazy housing market. So for those of you trying to buy, I totally and completely get your pain right now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride. Um, but I totally love being a Millie scout and able to help, um, people make PCS easier. That's the key. Yep just a friendly voice on the other end of the line. Sometimes, sometimes it goes both ways. Megan, I can't, can't count how many times she's like, y'all, I need your help. <laughs> like, I know, I know. So we're, we're here for that too. All right, Nicole, your turn. <laughs> Hi. Hey everybody. I'm Nicole. I'm a Millie Scout at Fort Hood. I've been a scout for three and a half years and I've been an army spouse for 18 years. And I love being a Millie Scout to help ease the stress for PCSing families and out-of-state landlords. Nicole and Megan were both able to do an awesome sort of job. Was it two years ago or was it last year where we did like, um, we live streamed two or three mm -hmm. scout jobs. That was so freaking fun. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they're always on call. And you guys, there's no like too strange of a job, right? So what was, Nicole, remind us what the job was? It was a new build that needed a refrigerator and um, the customer for Millie wanted the fridge delivered so they could have a fridge as soon as they moved in. So I met the Lowe's truck and gave them access to the house before the family arrived. So they had a place to put their, their food as soon as they arrived in town. Yeah, it was so cool. You guys will have to go back through our channel and find mm -hmm. that job. It was awesome because we had we had me like just kind of sitting here in the comfort of my home. <laughs> and you had Nicole and the scout client uh, in the in the probably hot ish uh, weather out in Texas, and we're inspecting a fridge together. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was really fun. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jana, joining us from Florida. Hey, Jana. Hey, how are you guys? Awesome. Good. So I'm Jana, and I'm here in Tampa at MacDill Air Force Base. It's going to be 88 today in February, so <laughs> it's warm. Um, yeah, so uh, we actually came back from the beach yesterday, so not too bad. But I've been a Millie Scout for just over a year now, and I've helped, just like Nicole said, military landlords as well as military families, PCS. I've been an Army spouse for 16 years, and um, I love giving back to the community. Awesome. I'm so jealous of that. Every time she, like, 
Mm -mm. (laughs) One big mistake that I've made uh, this year specifically was following Jana's personal uh, Instagram channel, which (laughs) makes me just sad. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining me and also putting up with me and my crazy ideas. Um, I would just love for our audience to know that the reason this live stream is even happening is because of these amazing women uh, right here for um, not only coming up with a lot of the ideas and topics that we're going to be hearing about the rest of the season, uh, helping me get organized with our guest, and also just lighting the fire like, hey, we need to do this again. This was so fun. So first of all, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of you for all that you do for military families. So let's jump right in. Of all the acronyms that folks need to know, there's a handful, I think, that we need to cover um, right off the bat. Again, I was listening to a a webinar or something the other day, and literally the speaker was just like, acronym, 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 which we're all guilty of. I mean, I know I am. And the person that was, uh, you know, the guest or whatever was like, wait a minute, I actually don't know what, what is that? And this is someone that had been in for a minute, you know, you would expect would know. And, and, you're like, wait, I don't know what that means. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's so right. We work, we live this like all day, every day. We forget that a lot of people don't. So let's start from the beginning. Megan, walk us through uh, maybe the very first acronym, PCS. Uh, tell us some of the things we need to know about it and what it even means. Okay, so PCS is permanent change of station. That means the orders have come and it's time to move. Um, basically, it's it's how you're going to get there. Um, there are a couple of different ways and we're going to unpack those in weeks to come, but you'll, you'll have two options. Um, either have the military do it for you or you can do it yourself. And I always say PCS is an acronym, but it's also a verb. Um, because a lot of times you'll hear people, it, it's military talk. You're going to hear them, Hey, we're PCSing this summer. So know that it's not just a noun of permanent change of station, the chances that that you're going to hear it that way are less than, Hey, we're PCSing this summer and this is where we're going. So that's pretty much the basics. There is the RFO that you saw in the intro. I laughed when I saw that because the RFO is what starts it all. Once that request for orders is out there and you know where you're going and you get those orders, that's when, that's when the PCS begins and where all the fun begins. Yeah, I think the RFOs often request for orders, you guys. Um, People get overly excited about them. Um, So (laughs) because because why, Megan? Because why? Because that starts it. I mean, I my husband would get home and it would be okay. You you we we have noticed that you're going here, but do we have it official? Until it's officially in writing, it's not well. And even sometimes when it's in writing, it's not as official as we would like it to be. Right. But once that request for orders <laughs> right. is there, it's definite that you're going. Um, I always say with the military, it's not a plan until after it happens, or I you're like in the that. middle of it. I like that. <laughs> So much. Yeah, it's not a plan until after it happens. It's so true because you always have to back, have a backup, but y'all don't do anything until you know for sure, right? Until you have orders. Uh, you can't you can't sign leases or anything crazy, um, mainly because you need that protection to be able to get out of stuff if stuff changes. Because, I mean, imagine it might just change. Um, okay, so we're learning also that we have choices, right? So a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today is kind of taking control of your move. Um, and empowering um, you all in our audience to know that you can take control of certain aspects of the move and you do have choices that you can make. Um, So Nicole, I would love to ask you um, to talk a little bit more about um, some of the biggest choices that you do have. Like what are your options specifically when it comes to getting your physical stuff from point A to point B? What are we looking at there? Okay, so you have your RFO. Now it's time to make some choices. All of the choices I'm going to mention, we're going to unpack later in this series. So there is the um, HHG is an acronym you'll hear, and that means household goods. Like it literally means household goods. And that is a full service move. That's a move where the government is going to contract with the mover. They're going to come to your house, pack all of your things. They will load all of your stuff in the moving truck, unload it all on the other end and get it from point A to point B. So you really don't have, other than standing around and supervising, you don't have a lot of control in an HHG move. That's a mouthful. Um, The second type is a Diddy move. And that's a lot easier to say too. And that's a do-it-yourself move. 
So with the do-it-yourself move, you have full control. You are in charge of getting your belongings, your household goods from point A to point B, whether you are like a go-getter and a real do-it-yourselfer and you want to pack everything and load it in a moving truck like a U-Haul or a Penske and drive it across country, or you might have, there are options to outsource that we'll talk about um, later in the unpack series. You are in full control. Um, then the last one is a partial ditty move. And everybody, if you are doing a full service HHG move, everybody should consider doing the partial ditty as well. Partial ditty means you're going to get, you're going to load your car up. Maybe you're going to get a U-Haul too. Maybe you just own a big truck in a trailer or maybe you own an RV. Um, you're going to fill it up with a ton of stuff that you want to have when you get to the other end. Uh, maybe you, you're filling it up with some things that you don't want broken that are special to you. With a partial ditty, you will be weighing your car empty, even if you just have a car, but you loaded it up to the brim. <laughs> you'll you'll weigh your car empty and weigh your car full, and you will get paid based on the weight that you carry. So anybody doing a full service move usually will do a partial ditty as well, because you're going to have a number of things with you that are going to be a weight <laughs> to tow across the country. Mm -hmm. So that one, everybody should consider if you're not already doing a full service, a full ditty. Sorry. I always think about like, I just get paid for the stuff you're taking. Like you're, you're going to take stuff y'all. Like everybody's going to take their mm -hmm. own stuff, like a plant or, you know, <laughs> whatever. You're always going to have stuff yeah. you want to take. So you might as well be compensated for it. So make sure that you're accounting for that properly by doing all the appropriate paperwork. So Diddy mm. should not be a foreign term. Partial Diddy should definitely not be a foreign term. Okay. So get that. And PPM, by the way, <laughs> they changed it on us. Right. So personally procured move or partial personally procured move. It's going to get fun, y'all. You need to download the workbook so you can keep up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Jana, as our resident hey. social media guru, <laughs> um, I would love to pick your brain a little bit about what some of the digital resources might be helpful for folks who are PCSing for the very first time or maybe the 15th time um, and just so, sort of now immersing themselves in uh, just a, a deeper understanding of the duty station they're moving to. Like, what are some tips that you might share for that? Sure. Um, I It's changed a lot, right? I mean, so when we started PCSing, what? 16 years ago, you couldn't just jump on Facebook or, um, you know, go follow hashtags on Instagram. But that is definitely a great place to start if you are trying, if you're doing the research phase. So I know even just McDill has like 10 different Facebook groups you can jump in and join and ask whatever your questions may be. And there are people that are more than willing to answer those questions. I always kind of caution, they'll be a little careful, make sure that you're, you know, taking their advice, but also, you know, considering what your own needs are as well. I think a lot of people try to get you to do what they did, or <laughs> they recommend places based on what their decisions were. So make sure that you're kind of looking at that both ways with those Facebook groups. And there can also, you know, be tendency towards, and not misinformation or negativity, but just make sure that you're kind of keeping what you need in mind. But um, another great one is Instagram as well. I know we jumped on there when we were moving to Tampa and we found all the places to eat and all the little things to go do and go see the manatees and the kayak rentals and things like that that are so fun here. And we still use that as a resource. And um, I think another one is the Millie base guides. So if you are moving soon, go ahead and jump on to Millie and they've got some great content there that discusses all of these aspects of the moves. So those would be probably my top three to pick. I love that. I used to always tell two people too, like go ahead and pretend like you're a local, like even though you don't live there yet. Like, don't let that hold you back. Like, go ahead and put stuff on your calendar that's happening in the different events spaces, you know, like follow the photographers that are taking awesome shots of all the outdoor activities and landscapes and stuff just to go ahead and literally immerse yourself as if you live there. Um, 
again, you know, to save time, right? Something is awesome. Yeah. And you'll always find a friend that's there too. So reach out to them and see, you know, yeah. hey, what would you recommend? And I'm sure they'd be more than willing to help you out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Always. Um, oh, this is so small. Hey, Marisha. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just so you guys know, it did not go live on Facebook. So we're on YouTube exclusively. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey <YouTube. laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> so I want to walk you all through. Um, it's funny, this kind of evolved out of uh, an on the fly preparation for a panel that we were proudly representing Millie on <laughs> with not a lot of notice. <laughs> um, but uh, we thought it might be helpful to give you all just a quick little um, guide, right? Some acronyms, a little, few more letters. Actually, they're not really letters. It's more like alliteration. Uh, I worked really hard to make sure that they were all A words, but we have a three-step three three step process for you <laughs> for PCSing. You guys feel free to chime in, but I'll try to hit these points pretty quickly um, on what you can do now, right? So you got your orders, you got your request for orders. What are some things that you can do right now to start preparing for your PCS, even though there's nothing you can actually maybe physically do just yet, right? So maybe you're looking at a summertime or you know a June. Let's just pretend like June is like the magic date for us. Okay, so what are we doing? The first thing that you wanna do Number one, assess your needs. All right. This is one thing that I, I mean, I'm huge on this just in general. I think uh, self-awareness is like key, right? To just about anything, any decisions that you need to be making or will be faced with in life. Uh, so this applies to your family as well and your housing needs as well. So go ahead and assess what your family needs look like. Do that now while things are relatively calm, right? And you've got a bit of a stasis happening, right? There's not huge fluctuations uh, in things. Uh, so that's talking about things like your budget, right? There's going to be a huge fluctuation in your budget uh, during a PCS. It just is what it is. But if you kind of know what your like sort of status quo is on your budget and um, what things, you know, you make room for and prioritize for yourself and your family and your household, um, those are good things to know because then you know your baseline, right? You need to know what your priorities are, right? So these are things like faith communities or, um, you know, outdoorsy type uh access or, or fitness facilities, things like that. If you have priorities, like what are your non-negotiables, the things that make you happy, that bring you joy in your life and your, we call it your pattern of life, right? What is your pattern of life? What does your typical Sunday look like? What does your typical Wednesday look like? Do you need to be near the sports complexes for the kids that play soccer? Or are you looking more towards a metropolitan area that um, will fulfill your nightlife itch? You know, things like that. Having a really clear understanding of what your your priorities are as a, as a household, as a family, um, is your, I think, just your first step because then you can start to fill those, fill those blanks in versus just kind of starting from scratch and wondering why it feels like something is missing, right? All right, step number two is you're going to start accumulating information. So you need to figure out your who, your what, your why, your when, your how. All of these little basic pieces of information about um, what the area, we're still talking about researching your new duty station, right? So you need to sort of get a clear picture on what it looks like to live at that installation, okay? Um, there are a few things I want to point out here when you're accumulating this information, right? So I want you to stay as objective as possible, right? Um, so not hearsay, not like, oh, that place is so blank, right? Um, everybody's got opinions. <laughs> this is true. And word of mouth is, is valuable and important, but make sure that you're staying objective. Do they or do they not have a Starbucks, right? That, that is a data point that is clearly objective. Not how awesome or gross is the Starbucks, but do they have one or not, right? Um, so just making sure that you're, you're trying to keep, you know, emotions and bias out of your decisions and out of your accumulation of information so that it doesn't become sort of shaded in any way. Um, the reality is, y'all, and then here's the point. The reality is, is that you're not changing your orders. You're going where you're going, okay? So you can go into it with a good attitude or a bad attitude. And the more bias you have, the more bad attitude is going to follow. So if you could stay as objective as possible, then you can po you can focus on the right things, right, and staying positive. Um, you want to make sure that you're being um, inclusive in the information that you are looking for. So don't put yourself in a silo, right? Don't convince yourself that you only like you know the historic neighborhoods and that's all you're willing to consider. Maybe <laughs> you you might actually find more benefit in living in, a, in an area that maybe you hadn't ever considered before um, because you've you've learned to open your aperture a little bit, so to speak. You're opening up your possibilities of, of where you might be happy um, and then making sure that the information that you are accumulating is relevant. 
Um, I am super guilty of going down rabbit holes and, and chasing down really irrelevant information, <laughs> which is kind of great to know trivially, but it doesn't necessarily help me when it comes to making my decision about where to live, right? So just try to stay focused, I guess, is, is the key here. All right, your third, or actually, let me take that back. After you've gotten through those first two steps, you've assessed your needs and you've accumulated enough information, you've now reached your first decision point. Um, so uh, assuming before this point, you've already decided to pursue living off the installation, uh, most people do. You're, you're looking at about 70-ish percent of folks who are in the military live off the installation for a variety of reasons, but it's a very popular choice. So assuming that's the choice that you've made, you're gonna look at either renting a home or buying a home. Now again, there are plenty of reasons why you would choose one or the other, and we're not here to tell you if one's better or one's not because it's a very individualized decision. But once you've accumulated enough information and you understand very clearly what your um, situation is, right, what your budget will allow, what your priorities are, what your future looks like, those sorts of things, you're now at a decision point um, so you can pursue sort of one lane or the other. I will also add though that even especially this year, you might wanna stay open. <laughs> like this isn't a hard decision. This is kind of one of those soft decisions. You're gonna pursue buying a house, but if you're looking at like, oh, actually it might be best for us to rent right now, you wanna stay open to that as well. Semper Gumby, right? Isn't that what our Marine friends say? Okay, so <laughs> the third step then is to assemble your team. So you're not doing this alone. I can't stress this enough. We want you to know that you have folks who are ready to support you. So if you're looking at renting a house specifically, um, we have our awesome Millie Scouts who are standing by uh, to help be your eyes and ears and boots on the ground um, to gather some of that objective information, right, that we talked about before. They can sort of fill in some of the, the, the information gaps uh, that come from not being there physically. So they can help you with that. Um, and they can also just help in a variety of ways. Um, I mean, you're looking at Jana and Nicole and Megan and those are your folks that you can reach out to and just be like, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about X, Y, Z? Um, and they're, they're happy to help you do that um, and sort of just be somebody on your side, right? All right, we also have our Agent Hero Network, which you're going to hear more about later on. Uh, those are all vetted uh, by us real estate agents who are all military veterans or spouses. That's the number one criteria. We also vet for experience, for reputation. We make sure that they adhere to our values as a company. They are amazing folks, and um, we highly encourage, regardless of who you work with, if you're looking at purchasing a house, that you um, spend a lot of time interviewing and making sure that these folks are savvy with the military lifestyle and the VA loan specifically. Um, and you know, we have other, we have other insights on, on choosing an agent to work with, but that is not a decision to be made lightly. So again, it gets its own bullet point here on assemble your team. All right. The other thing to think about are people like your lenders or, um, anyone else that's involved in this huge transaction. Again, if you decide to buy, um, those are all folks you can interview as well. I mean, believe it or not, like, I think a lot of times we are convinced in the military that we just have to go with what we got, right? Just take what you get and don't pitch a fit, right? <laughs> it's not always the case. You actually do have some control over these decisions. Um, and we want to empower you guys to feel confident in doing so. So just to point out a couple more resources that we have available, um, all of the Millie resources are free. Um, that we have toolkits, we have our base guides that will um, tell you a lot about the duty stations. We also have a move concierge that you'll hear about more or you hear more about soon. But these are folks who can help you do some of the nitty gritty uh, transferring of things when it comes to a PCS. So think about your utilities or your cable or actually hiring a mover if you decide to do your own move, right? Things like that we can help you with. Um, and then we also have our services, which we talked about just now, our agent heroes and our scouts. So hopefully that will help sort of just give you a bit of an orientation around some of the first steps um, that we need to be thinking about when it comes to researching for your for your next duty station for your first PCS or like I said your 15th. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be chatting with you all next week. Um, we've introduced you to three of our amazing scouts here. Yeah, everybody. Um, I want to also now introduce you to our scout Terry at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. My name is Terry Licklider. I'm a military spouse of 19 years. My husband is in the Army and he's stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. We live in Kansas City with our two kids. 
I wanted to be a Millie Scout because we've moved eight times in the past 19 years and I know how hard it can be. When you're moving to an area and you don't know anybody, you don't know where to live, you're looking for a rental, you're looking to buy a house, um, and you don't have any support there. So I wanted to be a Millie Scout so that I could help simplify the process for other military families that are moving to an area where they don't know anybody and they need a little assistance. And I would love to be able to help any military family make the PCS process easier. All right, it's so good to see Terry. Uh, she's at Fort Leavenworth. I actually had a conversation with her this morning. She's gonna join us for another episode a little later on. So if you don't know a lot about Millie, you're probably sitting there right now going, okay, they keep talking about these Millie Scouts. I don't get it, I don't get it. So we're gonna break it down for you. Millie Scouts are your eyes and ears, as Kelly said, your boots on the ground. When you get those orders and you know, okay, I'm going wherever you're going. You can find one of us. We can go. We can check out the house for you. We're the ones that can help you. When you can't travel to the location and you don't want to do sight unseen, we're the way to help. There are two different ways that we help. We help military landlords who are self-managing properties, and then we also help PCSing families. So I'll let Nicole tell you about what we do for military landlords, and then Jan will fill you in on what we do for military PCSing families. All right. Thanks, Megan. So for military landlords, the most common services we offer um, would be walkthrough inspections. That's probably the most common one. I've done pre-move out walkthroughs where the tenant was still in the house. And then I've done inspections where the tenants have already moved out. And we just go through and take a lot of photos. Some landlords want us to like FaceTime or Skype them in so they can see the house with us. However, the landlord wants us to do the move out inspection. We're flexible on that. Um, and then another one is if you're trying to get new tenants in your house, we can open the house and let prospective tenants in. These are people that the landlord has already vetted. We just give them access to the house so they can look around and see if it's the right fit for them. And um, let's see, what else am I missing? The move in. Oh, we can also give access to contractors. That's another common one where, you know, the house is already vacant and you need to have some work done on your house. We can meet a contractor and give them access to the house when you're not in the local area. And I'm not sure if I forgot any. If I did, help me out, ladies. <laughs> I think you covered them all. Basically, okay. basically, don't be afraid. We also do custom listings is what she's getting at. Um, no matter how crazy it sounds reach out to the scout anyway. We'll probably make it work one way or another. Right, Jana? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nicole, you, you got it. And the only thing I was going to say that is the same for the military families is photo shoots or something just to get documentation if a landlord or a family is wanting you to do that. So that's kind of what what we can do as well for the military families. Um, as well, we can be there for the HHD or <laughs> partial ditty or whichever <laughs> you choose to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we can be there to help check off inventory lists, be an extra helping hand. Um, I've heard people hiring a scout to be that person that's just you're in the middle of a move, you're receiving all your goods, you know, hey, can you just run and go get us lunch for this hour? We, you know, we can't, we can't leave. The packers are here or the movers are here. We can do that. And just anything that you can think of um, that, again, like that helping hand that could help you out. I've even heard of people, you know, they can't, or maybe they don't want to, uh, um, you know, buy a plane ticket, buy a hotel or rent a hotel room, rent a car just to come and like look at a maybe a potential rental house that may or may not work out. Well, you could hire a scout for that. We could go take pictures of the neighborhood, go take pictures of the house, um, just things like that, that it's like your eyes on the ground without you physically having to go there. And that's the great thing about technology. I know Nicole's done this. I'm sure Jana's done this. I would say probably 90% of my jobs, I end up 
on FaceTime, Skype, whatever the, the platform may be with the client, able to show them the house. Um, I have certain, every PCS, um, my list got longer and longer of what we required in a house. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's the craziest things and you can't see that on pictures. And so you're able to say to the scout, Hey, what does this closet look like? Show me the closet, stuff like that. It's simple tasks that that way you have somebody on the ground that you can ask questions to. They can tell you, Hey, there's a really annoying dog next door that barks all the time. The entire time I was here, they can catch the things that you're not going to catch when you're just looking at pictures and pictures can be deceiving. We all know it. So we're, it's a great way to have the opportunity to have somebody look at the house. Um, I know favorite job, just throw one out at me, ladies. Cause I I've had too many. There's no way I can pick one. Well, okay, so I'll go. Um, I have a friend actually that just moved on base and she was kind of just overwhelmed with the amount of stuff <laughs> that she, she that she received. So she just she just kind of needed some help unpacking and organizing it just to get it going. And so that's something that Millie Scouts can help with as well. So that was that's been my favorite so far and it's been fun working with her. <laughs> Nicole, what do you got? I would say my fi my favorite was for a potential somebody that was PCSing in. It was a potential rental, and the house it was one of those. The house looked cute in the ad, and it was like whoa, <laughs> like it was bad. <laughs> so it was like kind of crazy how bad it was, but it was also I had her on Facetime, so she was like when I got to my car when the job was done, she was because the realtor the um the property manager was in the house with me which made it really awkward. Um, I mean, it was like severe dog damage, wine spilled in the fridge and they were still showing it like that. Um, a porch that was kind of falling apart. But anyways, the client was like, wow, that house did not look like it did in pictures, did it? And I was like, no, it did not. So I saved, you know, for a small fee, she saved renting a really, really awful house. And, and that Nicole hits it. So when we, when we moved to DC, we flew up and spent a weekend. I don't even remember how many houses we looked at. Thankfully, plane tickets were cheap, but we still spent hundreds of dollars to do it. And for the hundreds of dollars that we spent, we could have easily had a scout go and look at things for us and be able to know because you can't always afford um, you add kids to the mix and school and all that. And the travel goes away. Um, they don't tell you that when you have kids, but it does. Um, so for those of you that are still doing the PCS life without kids, it gets very different. Um, so that's why scouts are so great. And they're such, they're such a resource. And that's, that's what we're here to do. We're here to be your boots on the ground. We, we know most of us have been in the area for a pretty good amount of time. So we know, you know, Hey, here's the great spots. Here's, you know, here's the cool coffee shop down the street that not many people know about kind of the way as Kelly said earlier to find out more about where you're going before you even get there so that when you land you can just jump right in um, we're good at that with military spouses but it just gives you a leg up so it's a great way to get involved and to have us help you out so while we're enjoying scouting as a side gig, we'd also like to introduce you all to some incredible military spouse hustlers up next is our mill spouse small biz shout out of the week Meet Karen. Hi, I'm Karen, Army veteran spouse and founder and chief happiness officer over here at Kids Cake Boxes, where we are dedicated to giving you and your child quality screen free time in the heart of the home. In Engaging Enrichment Activity, Kids Cake Boxes are personal sized cake baking kits that cultivate your child's creativity, help build their confidence in the kitchen, and encourage them to craft a deliciously edible and perfectly shareable work of art. I invite you and your child to start baking memories today with Kids Cake Boxes at kidscakeboxes.com. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Um, first of all, now I want cake. I don't know about you. Right? Like, it looks not, so cute. I did not need to see that ad at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> um, I am so excited to be talking about this next topic. And um, I think what we're going to be talking about is a little polarizing. 
right? Okay. <laughs> Let me explain. It's nothing. It's nothing, y'all. <laughs> but have you ever noticed that there's Team Diddy, Team No Diddy, right? Okay. So for y'all newbies, that's there are people that are diehard do-it-yourselfers. They are going to move their stuff every single time. And there are people who will never even pretend like that's their life. And I'm I'm over in that camp, right? There's team rent, team buy, right? I always rent. I'm not trying to get strapped with a house. There's team, I buy everywhere I go. I sell it later. I rent it later, right? There are people that have very clear lanes. Um, I think my next lane, this polarizing lane, is about how much research people do before they move, right? So to help me break down this topic, I brought in my research buddy, Jen. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Welcome. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being so brave and having literally no information <laughs> before joining us. I appreciate your, <laughs> your no stuff problem. there. Um, okay, you guys, Jen, I'm going to read your proper introduction because I like don't want to, these numbers floor me. All right. Miss <laughs> Jen here has four kiddos, two dogs, is it two dogs? No, four kids, one poodle, one. 22 PCSs, y'all. I don't even know. I kind of want to fact check that. That's crazy. That's crazy. But so, okay. So <laughs> Jen is joining us with an insane amount of moves under her belt, but she's also mm -hmm. Millie's content lead. She's helping us research, produce, and refine all of the amazing information that we try to offer you all um, that's going to be helpful in making sure that you are prepared for your PCS. Um, okay. So Jen, I, I don't want to jinx you because I know you, you just got a little settled. But um, if your spouse came home today with surprise orders to a place you've never been, what would be your first steps? <laughs> um, first, I would, I need a minute to process. It <laughs> takes me a minute to get over that shock. But um, I love to research, and that's kind of my coping mechanism. Um, not everyone is that way. So if you aren't that way, find yourself a friend who loves research. Um, so my first thing is to actually figure out what the installation is. Um, we moved last summer to a location that we had zero context for. It was never a possibility. So I looked it up. I, I checked out the installation website to see, you know, who's at this base, what they do, why they're there, how long it's been there. Um, and so right away for us, I knew that this is a schoolhouse assignment. So there are a lot of people that are rotating through this duty station real fast. Your permanent party, you know, group is going to be smaller. So as a mom of four, I know that I've got house needs, right? Um, and that if we're at a location that's got a lot of students, you know, that might make my house search a little bit different, right? Students that are early to mid-career might have different housing needs than, say, a mom with a pack of kids. Um, so that kind of starts to shape what that looks like for me and, and kind of help me mentally prepare. Um, the next thing I do, I, and you mentioned it earlier, and I'm, I'm thrilled, is that pattern of life exercise. Mm -hmm. um, that is really important. Um, I, I think everyone should do that. And in that, Google is my best friend, where I start figuring out, um, you know, where does my kid swim at? What happens if the kid that's really into art now pivots and decides she wants to do dance? Where would mm -hmm. I be driving? What would I be looking at? Um, when I don't want to cook, where am I going to go? That's, I mean, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. Right? Well, <laughs> I, I've, I've thought back on some of my past PCSs and I'm always like, ah, oh, there seems like there's always this like jolt, right? Where, mm -hmm. where something's off and you can't quite put a finger on it and you just blame it on PCS. Like, oh, it's stressful, you know, transition and all the things. Um, but usually it's something simple like, oh my God, I miss my coffee shop, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, ah, okay. That's important to me, clearly, like that mm -hmm. that hour once a week that I had reserved that I would meet. You know what I mean? So like, again, if you don't see that, like it's sometimes it takes a while for that to surface. Um, so the more you start to look at your patterns, you know, what's what's important to you? What makes you happy? What brings you joy? Um, what do you need? Uh, then you can try to fill those holes or at least know that the hole is going to be there maybe. And then you can start like adjusting before <laughs> instead of being exactly. Like, unsettled when you get there. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, what are, you talked about looking up the bases and, and information mm -hmm. about the base, which I think is brilliant. And also I think that comes with experience. So you guys, if you're watching this and you haven't done a lot of PCSs, like that's a bomb, that's a knowledge bomb right there. Cause, um, those are insights that take a while to grasp. Um, so ask questions like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go in your Facebook group or wherever and you have people who are saying, well, it's a schoolhouse, you know, like, hey, 
what does that actually mean? What does that mean? What are you saying right now? Oh, and someone mm-hmm. like Jen can answer that. That's great. What are some yeah. other what are some other resources and, and kind of go tos that you look to? So touching on that, I will say that, you know, the Millie Base Guides, that's literally what we do. We come out swinging on that first page with all the information you need to know about that installation and why it's important. So um, I think that's a tremendous resource. And then we hit on some of those other big questions like, where are the schools? Where are the major entertainment areas? Um, What are the popular neighborhoods or what are the, and I I hesitate to say popular neighborhoods because Mm -hmm. that kind of um, that it, it's actually kind of a loaded term, right? Popular has a context, popular for what? So right. we kind of look at the range of neighborhoods. If you want rural, you could live over here. If you want like the city life or you want to walk everywhere, check out this area. If you got a pack of kids and like how far is the closest park, you know, maybe this mm-hmm. area is a good choice for you. Um, so definitely the base guides. Um, I also like to tap into the local newspapers. And I know that makes that. me sound so old. No, I know. Y'all, a the newspaper. Are, they were wait, mentioning. wait, wait, let's unpack that. A newspaper is what, <laughs> just kidding. I know. I, I defined a phone book <laughs> the other day, so it's fine. I'm on a roll. I know. I know. I sound so old. Um, you guys are talking about Instagram and that kind of thing. But, um, <laughs> but I like that local reporting because it kind of tells you, what the area thinks about itself, right? Mm, you know, I love that. you mentioned earlier living like a local. I can build a life for my family anywhere, you know, but it really helps if I can tap into that local um, that local connection and figure out what do the people who are from this area love about this area? Because mm. I want to love it too. Um, so yeah, the local news sources, they tell you like what they're proud of, what they feature. Um, it's also a great place to tap into like if there's stuff where maybe the schools are being considered for rezoning and this neighborhood's on the edge, you know, if that's really mm. important to you, that's a great thing. And, you know, if you've, if you've got a great real estate agent, they'll be able to kind of clue you into that stuff too. But right. doing that research ahead of time is really helpful. Yeah, it's actually really timely for us here. I, I watched a school board meeting that no one really knew about, but it was all about rezoning all the different districts. So it's like, oh my God, nobody's paying attention. Yeah, that's a huge um, deal. Huge deal. And what, and it'll, mm-hmm. it, you're right. The newspapers are going to be a, a first step to what people are passionate about. What are the fights? Yeah, nobody you know, Instagrams like, a school board meeting. <laughs> this is probably true. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I think my feed is a little different than maybe Jana's feed. <laughs> I might see all kinds of that, but yeah, you're right. You're right. You're not going to see that on the surface, but it does definitely give you sort of like, oh, these are the things that people talk about here. These are the big deals. This is the big deal here. Um, This is the big industry here, right? You can learn a lot about an area once you understand what the industries are that, that, that provide for the area here at Fort Bragg, the big industry is the military. So that's Mm -hmm. a huge indicator of, well, you know, we've kind of been embraced by the local community. Um, mm-hmm. we, we put food on their tables, literally, like in a lot of ways. So there's there's not that like hesitations where you might get at an area that's less, uh, I wouldn't say pro-military, that sounds weird, but yeah, cool. you know, you see what I'm saying? Like it's a huge, we're a huge function of this community here. So right. um, it definitely dictates the tone. Um, that's, ah, oh, that's great. Oh my God. I could do, see, this is a problem you guys, because I, and I actually, I think one of my questions was supposed to be, how do you not chase the rabbits? Cause I spend all day chasing rabbits down rabbit holes. <laughs> um, Jen, get me focused. Let's, okay. <laughs> because everything is interesting to me. So how, what's, what advice do you give to someone who needs to just zone it in and stay focused? So I give myself a week to process. Um, and I, it's, it's a very hard, it's kind of arbitrary, but a week feels good to me, um, for a week, like, you know, the RFO maybe hasn't actually shown up yet, or maybe you've just got it, but you can't do anything yet, but I take a week to process. So during that week, I do chase those rabbit trails because that helps me figure out what my life looks like. It helps me get a lay of the land and kind of figure out the local geography, what, um, where the services are that I need and the things that are important to me lay, um, after that, once I start to get like some papers in my hand, then I start diving to figure out those deep questions. You know, what is a realistic budget for our housing? Um, what are my, you know, prime choices in housing? What are my, you know, what's my second and third? Um, I really like pros and cons lists. Um, and I, I make lots of lists. So I, I literally do have a list when I say I have a first choice, a second choice and a third choice. I do. I write it all out. Um, and then I write out my pros and cons for each one because it helps me kind of focus on what's really important. Um, I also I like highlighters. Um, so I like to put I know I know I have a problem. I have a problem. So I like to put stars by things. It. 
but it helps me figure out what's important. It helps me focus in on the things that are important to my family. And then I use that as my guidepost for all future decisions. Um, Oh yeah. It's so important, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you can get emotionally wrapped up in a lot of this very quickly and very yeah. easily, especially just how stressful it all is. Your, mm -hmm. your emotions are the first thing to like want to take over, you know? So it's right. hard to kind of just stay, stay focused. Um, also if you're looking at two or three different duty stations, maybe you're not sure which one, right? Mm -hmm. Having a system, um, with some very clear data points that you're looking at will help you compare base, base A, base B, base C, um, so that you're, you know, at least you have feasible options no matter what happens, which gives you a, re I mean, I don't know, I just think that's one of the most empowering things to right. not be off guard no matter what happens. Um, so Jen, just go online, pull up a Millie base guide, and yeah. that will give you all the information. When you are making easy that button. wish list for PCS, yep. just do that. It's an yeah. easy button. We've yep. done it. That's what we're trying to get at here. Like, it sounds like a lot of work because it is, and we've done it all for you, mm -hmm. and it's over on the Millie base guide. It's over there. Yes, over by there. people who love researching. This it's brings so us joy. <laughs> yeah, back to your friends that love research. You found us. We're here. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, speaking of, um, has there ever been a time that you feel like you made a mistake in your research? Um, sure. A wrong turn if you will. And then how did you adjust or learn from that situation? Um, yeah, you know, we have, you make decisions with the best information that you can, right? And I, I think it's important in that case to give yourself grace for that. You can research, you can do the best that you need to, um, and you can try your hardest to make the perfect decision, but sometimes there isn't, right? Sometimes you have to choose from less than desirable results. Um, and you make the best decision you can with that information. Uh, so give yourself grace that you did the best you could. Um, I, I think sometimes there's like a little bit of a tendency to kind of sharpshoot you and your spouse or blame other people or the information that you got. And that's not really helpful. So, um, you know, once you have put that aside, then you can kind of look at how can I shape this in a way that works for my family? Like I said earlier, you can build a life for yourself. There's a lot you can control within your house and within your little like circle to kind of find some goodness in there. And it's it's not a great decision, right? It's not hard. Nobody wants to have to live with consequences of a decision they regret, but sometimes you do. It's, it's a pragmatic choice. Um, you have to evaluate like the financial ramifications of your decision. If it's something that's really a hardship on your family, then maybe it is better to just decide, okay, we're going to go ahead and move, even though it's going to cost us money here and time and effort because it alleviates this. Um, that's a super personal decision. Like we talked about earlier and everybody's kind of come down on different um, places on that decision. So I would say go back to your pros and cons list, go back to that pattern of life and revisit all of that and work through that decision making process again with your new information and mm. see where you come down. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's it's we're trying to get everyone as as informed as possible up front again, because we want you to 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 avoid the missteps. Right. We don't want you to mm -hmm. fall into the potholes and the trips that happen. Um, but when they do know that you've done your best. Um, and you're right. Reevaluate based on the new information. Things change. I, oh, I love that, Jen. You sound like you have some experience with that. I'm not going to bring it up. But... You said it a time or two. <laughs> Nobody gets this far in military life it's without true. a few wrong turns, right? It's, it's true. Um, I will say place. ours would have been prevented by using a scout and having Ooh. some boots on the ground to really assess yeah. that housing because yeah. they would have said like, you've said you have house needs. Are you sure this is really right. going to meet your house needs. Right. Um, right. It's, it's uh, gathering, it's gathering more information, right? Y'all. I, mean, uh -huh. I, I joke that the scouts are, are like camera. We, we try to keep them from veering into like giving opinions, right. About a house. Cause it's, we, we're just fact finders. We are, I don't like objectifying people, but I'm like, <laughs> y'all are objects. Like put yourself in the place of an, like your, your camera, your video recorder, you are someone who notices really strong aromas, right? But that doesn't mean that you have, you know, you're not weighing in on the decision because you're only trying to provide as much information as possible to the person who is, uh, which ultimately is you. So, and I don't know anybody that doesn't feel better with more information uh, when Absolutely. making that decision. So we're here mm -hmm. for you for that. Jen, thank you so much for Thanks, sharing Kelly. your time with me, your expertise, and for all of your amazing work on our Millie Base Guides. We are so appreciative of you. Um, and yeah, best of luck. Hopefully no surprise Oops. orders. I am so sorry I put right. that out into the universe for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be fine. You got us. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Jen. We appreciate you.
Okay, everyone, this is going to be our segment of the show where we are going to be talking about our agent heroes. So you may have heard us mention agent heroes in the past. You're definitely going to hear us talk about them in the future. And I want to give you a heads up on this first episode of season two, what our agent hero network is and how amazing these folks are and how they're all standing by, um, like over a thousand of them standing by to help you out on your next PCS if you're thinking or considering about buying a home or selling a home. So joining me now is Ken Robbins, our CEO and co-founder. Welcome, Ken. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. I'm I'm honored. I didn't get to appear in season one of the Impact, so Aww. I'm honored that we make it into season two. Yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah intended that's, like it's a tough it's a t it's a tough invite. Like not everybody. I'm the CEO of the company. I didn't even get an invite in season one. So. I had to, we had to get that microphone situation sorted and that camera sorted. You know, I got standards. <laughs> I got a new computer now. New so that's computer. Why. Yep, new, new camera, everything. Well, super happy that you made the cut this season. <laughs> and we're going to be, um, I wanted to bring you on, Ken, first of all, so that folks know who's behind this amazing company. Ken and our other co founder, Jason Dempsey, uh, started actually, fun fact, Agent Hero before Millie. So I wanted to let you tell the people um, all about sort of the inception of Millie, kind of what drove um, the whole entire concept. And I think that story begins with Agent Hero. So take us back, Ken. Where did Agent Yeah. Hero so, that, and it's, um, I'm excited to tell this story because a lot of people don't know. They just assume like Millie was like the first incarnation of what we did, but actually it went further back. So we started off with, it was a really kind of simple idea, which was we were two vets who had moved a lot. Um, and had frustrating experiences in real estate. Um, and then fast forward, I was ending my career and my wife, Heidi, had gotten into real estate uh, as a military spouse and she was, became a real estate agent. And we just, between myself and Jason, you mentioned, and Craig Cummings, who's our other uh, co-founder, we kind of just got together one day and we're like, hey, there's something to this. Like, why aren't we creating you know, more opportunities for military spouses and veterans in the real estate field to help other military families buy homes. So that was kind of the the incarnation, if you will, that became Agent Hero. Um, and that was the original idea. Let's build a network of really trusted, high-performing, great real estate agents who all happen to be either a veteran or you know a military spouse. And so that was that was the notion. Let's just go out and build this network. And we started off with literally just a couple of agents, and then we've now grown it to over 1,200 across the whole country. Um, and so we're super excited about like just the network and the type of agents we've recruited into it. Um, and that was kind of the first incarnation. And then what happened is over time, um, we realized we could do a lot more than just solve the problems around buying and selling homes for military families. And then between working with a lot of our partners and, and some of our investors and advisors, that was kind of where the idea for Millie kind of sprung up out of that was like, hey, you know, the real estate is just one piece of that transaction or one piece of that process. Let's tackle the whole PCS process and let's help. And that's, you know, Millie was born and then, you know, we we, we brought in, uh, you know, Military Property Project that became, you know, the Scout Network. And so then we added all these other services you see today. But that, yeah, Agent Hero was really kind of the foundation of, of the company. So let's talk specifically about our agent heroes and what makes them special and stand out above other networks I know that are out there. There are tons of real estate agent referral networks out there. Ken, tell us a little bit about why our agents are special. Yeah, I, I mean, I think what makes our agents kind of unique is a, a few different things. Um, so first, they're you know we talked about their veterans or military spouses. Um, so they're gonna they just understand PCSing without you having to explain what PCSing is. Um, now I want to be I want to be clear that, that that doesn't mean that like there's other agents that couldn't help you do a good job. It's just that the comfort you kind of have with one of our agents is just, they start off by understanding that PCS process. Um, and, and that can be kind of a stress reliever. Um, you know, for, for most families, you don't want to have to explain why you're moving to where you are. You just want to be able to say I'm PCSing and like people get that, right? Like, so our agents, their background and experience understand that. The second piece is, you know, we don't, so that's the first thing we look at, are they a veteran or military spouse? The second piece though, is we wanna make sure they're great real estate agents too. So it's not just enough to be one of those two. You also have to be good at what you do. So typically most of our agents, I'd say on average five years of experience, uh, five years in the business, um, you know, do you know dozens of transactions every single year. Um, so th th they're kind of just their experience, right? And they know what they're doing. And I can tell you that right now in the current housing market that we're in, um, experience really does count for something because right. 
when you're going into a situation where you have to do multiple offers, having an agent that has that experience and understands that process uh, really well can be give you a leg up. Um, and right. and look, every agent's got to cut their teeth and then we get it. New agents have to learn. But having experience really does help um, because, you know, you're competing against a lot of other offers. So you want to have that experience in there. And then the last piece is we just always make sure they're they're they're, you know, they're above board. Right. They haven't done anything that compromise their integrity and values because um, we want to make sure they're they're looking out for your best interest. And that's really the bottom line is we we want the agents to think about your needs first and foremost, not just about helping you buy a house. I mean, that's what they're there to do, but they're really there to, to educate you and help you through a process. And in some cases, maybe you might find out you don't want to buy a house. Right. Uh, and that's OK, too. Like we want our agents to be feel like they're there to support you as a military family during your PCS process, whatever the decision is that you make in terms of what you need to do. I want to also just say that we have a wait list of people who are waiting to get on the agent hero list in the network. And the reason that that is, again, like you mentioned, Ken, is, is we have some pretty stringent vetting criteria and there's a reason it's not, again, it's not that we don't, you know, want to give the new folks a chance. We just want to make sure that maybe they're cutting their teeth on people that don't have the the challenges and the restrictions that our military families have. Um, so we're there to, you know, watch watch them, support them, make sure they're getting to the point that they need to be um, at to be able to serve our families efficiently, professionally, and with the most amazing um, experience possible because we don't have time for setbacks and for disruptions. We need to be moving as quickly as possible with someone who is extremely experienced, savvy with the VA loan, right? Like all of these sorts of things things. We tell people on a daily basis, like you need to be interviewing your team. We've talked about that earlier today. You need to be interviewing your agent. You need to be interviewing, even if you're using our agents, we still encourage you to interview them. Make sure it's a good fit, yeah. right? Yeah. This is a huge- In fact, one of the things we always see, like we can, we, we will connect you. Our concierge service is great. So our concierge service, so, you know, is there 24 seven use, they're going to text, email, phone call you, then communicate however you want best. One of the things you can say is, hey, can you assign me to two or three different agents? Yeah. Uh, and then that way I can kind of pick and choose which one of them I want after talking to them because we we get it. Not everybody's a great fit for a variety of reasons. And so whoever we want somebody you're comfortable with and you're comfortable working with and, and, and feel like this is somebody that, you know, I can enter into a relationship with. So we encourage you to do that. Connect with two or three of them. Have a conversation with them. Ask them about their business, how many transactions they do. Um, you know, don't get I, I, you know, one thing I always hear is sometimes I'll hear age, or, uh, military families will say, well, the agent I'm working with is doing too many transactions. Um, don't necessarily make that the judge. Judge it based on their communication, how often they're going to communicate, how they're going to communicate. Um, they can balance it. Most of them are really good at what they do. Don't be afraid of having somebody that's working with multiple people because that that probably is an indication that they know what they're doing and they're right. good at what they do. Um, you know, if an agent tells you, "Well, I got all the time in the world because I don't have anybody else." <laughs> that may not be the best thing either, right? That may be they're not busy enough. And I will tell you, these things matter when it comes to negotiations uh, on contingencies, on the on the price, right? Um, and it, like I said, competitive market, that agent and that, you know, in a lot of cases, we always say too, like one of the key aspects is how local are they? How well do they know the actual neighborhood you're going to be moving into? Um, because in a lot of cases, those realtors may have relationships with other real estate agents already, um, they've worked with them in past transactions. So if the house you're trying to buy is being sold by an agent they have a relationship with, you bet your butt that that matters because when your offer goes in, that agent, when they're communicating to their client is saying, hey, I've worked with this agent. If they tell me this, I know it's good. Right. Um, and so that those relationships matter. And that's kind of what you're getting um, when you work with them. So, you, so all these are things you should kind of have a conversation with them. Um, and talk to two or three of them until you find the one that you think is kind of best fit for you, for, for you know, your needs and what you're looking to, to, to do. I cringe every time I see in a Facebook group of someone asking, hey, I'm moving to the area. Do you guys have any recommendations for agents? And not because, I mean, those, are, those recommendations are super important and, and really strong. You know, if they're coming word of mouth yeah. from somebody who's used that agent, that's huge. Um, but then it's just like... Like comment, comment, yeah. there's like 85 recommendations before, you know, the end of the day. And you're like, 
well, my goodness, I could have opened a phone book. You guys, a yeah. phone book is what we used to have um, to like <laughs> look up directories of businesses. But that's what I always think of. I'm like, it's almost just like Googling and getting results for, for agents. So again, we're just trying to make it a little bit easier for y'all, do a little bit of the preliminary work for you um, with everything, with the base guides, with our scouts who are able to help you recon right from afar. And then also with our Agent Hero Network, where we've done a little bit of that upfront legwork to kind of skim off a bit yeah. Um, of the of the the crowd that you don't necessarily I mean you could absolutely could but we just want to make sure that we're giving you the best right so we're able to connect you like like Ken yeah. said with a couple of different agents have conversations with them um, get a feel for you know how well you could work together and then move forward with confidence um, knowing that you've made a great choice so yeah it's, it's it's look it's we always say this it's the most expensive thing you're ever gonna buy mm -hmm. in your life is your home uh, and so it's really important that relationship that you you build with that agent and hopefully it continues well past the time of the transaction, right? Like you don't want your, you know, one of the things that, you know, a lot of our agents pride themselves on is they're there for you well past, you know, the well past the day you sign and take yeah. of the house, right? So, so they're, they're going to continue to help you, you know, by either, whether it's recommending contractors, they know, you know, other professionals and things, um, because they're doing this all the time. They see things and know people that you don't otherwise know. And you should always be able to go back to them even years later and say, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. Or another good one is like, Hey, I'm thinking of doing a renovation. What gives me the biggest return on my investment? Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes, you know, what you want to do and what you should do are two different things. And so it's important to have those conversations. Your agent should be there for you later on uh, to, you know, to help you through those decisions as well. So um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you find that person you can build that, that long-term relationship with. Yeah, totally. Um, there's no obligation to do any kind of anything yeah. with anybody. Yeah. These yep. conversations are free and plentiful and available to you. If yep. you are potentially exploring uh, purchasing a home this year, whereas in previous years you hadn't, we know the market is like upside down and crazy. We are going to hope to bring you some experts in the coming weeks to break down the market generally, and then also maybe in some specific areas. So be sure to stay tuned for, for the duty stations that are coming your way. If that is somewhere you might be headed, um, you'll have the opportunity to pick the brains of, of a local expert live here on the show, but then also feel free to connect with one of our agents and our concierge primarily um, to go ahead and start just having some conversations with people. Um, they'll, they'll be, I don't know, any agent that wouldn't be happy to give you all of the information available <laughs> that they know about an area that you're headed to, whether you're, whether you've convinced, you know, you've made the decision to purchase or not. Um, again, no obligation to have those exploratory conversations and just gather information, right? It's all, we're, it's what we're here for guys. Okay. Yeah, that's Yep. Any last words? Yeah, we're no, just you know, look, uh, uh thanks for having me on. Uh, finally, uh, I finally get to go. Uh, no, but seriously, everybody who's watching, like, look, the bottom line is, it, and Kelly will talk about this all season long. Like, we, you know, our number one mission here is we're trying to take care of you all and making sure because we live this, we know what you're going through, and we want to make it a little easier for you, the process a little better. So, that's what we're, we're kind of that what's is what drives us every day. So um, pay attention to the shows that are coming up. I think you're going to get a lot of helpful information in those. Um, and then always reach out. That's what we're here to do is like, we'll help you get that information that you need um, to make this process go. Like I said, we can't, we can't, we can't stop deployments, right? We can't stop all the operations that are going on. Those things are inevitable. That's military life. Um, but if we can make your move just a little bit easier, a little less stressful, you know, maybe that pays off in other areas and, and, and makes that time at your next duty station all that much better. So awesome. All right. Thanks, Ken. Okay, everyone. I hope that you have enjoyed our conversation today on the unpack. I hope that you've learned a thing or two and maybe feel a little more at ease uh, about an upcoming PCS. Uh, don't forget about the weekly freebie uh, that's available to you. If you're watching on Facebook later on, you could type PCS in the comments and we'll deliver that to you via messenger. If you're on YouTube, just let us know in the comments you want the PCS freebie and we will make sure to get one of those to you as well. It's our PCS basics toolkit, okay? It's gonna have a lot of the information that we cover today in a handy dandy little notebook that you can, you can have uh, either printed out or on a device uh, with all of the acronyms that you could ever 
ever dream of. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week. We'll be chatting about your earthly belongings, right? <laughs> your household goods. And guess what? Those letters are HHG, right? So we're going to have Kristen James, who is a professional organizer. Uh, she's going to be joining us to tidy up a little bit, right? Um, we're going to have our very first, our actual, the very first ever agent hero, Heidi Robbins, who happens to be married to the fellow you just saw, uh, Ken, our CEO. She's going to be walking us through the market uh, for the DC region. So Washington, DC, if you're headed to the DC, Maryland, Virginia, they call that DMV or the NCR, the National Capital Region, all the letters, right? If you're headed anywhere in that area, you're going to want to tune in because Heidi is an absolute, like she's, she knows so much, it's not even funny. Uh, so she's going to be joining us then. And then we're also going to have Dawn Smith, one of our OGest scouts. <laughs> she's up in the Northern Virginia area. So she'll be giving um, a little bit of her insights as well. Also joining us again will be Megan, Nicole, and Jana for episode two. All right, everyone, take care, and we will see you next.